Today we are checking on Prius, our gravid garter snake, who should be giving birth any day. Oh! oh my gosh, that's a baby. That's a baby crawling through the branches. Oh my gosh, and there's another one on the ledge. Ah, oh, Prius, you had your babies. You had your babies. Oh my gosh, there are babies! Okay, we are going to have to take down this entire enclosure, take out the adult snakes, take out all the decor, and find all the babies, because they hide in every nook and cranny inside all the decor pieces and in the substrate. So, I wonder how many we'll have. So our proud mama here seems to have gotten all of her babies out. I'm trying to run my thumb down her belly. I don't feel any lumps at all. So I, and these are live bears. They are not egg layers, but I do believe she got all the babies out. So now we're going to go through and check every corner of this enclosure and tear it apart to find all of her babies. How many do you think she'll have? Uh, eight. Eight? I'm gonna say 12. I'll say 12 babies. Okay, let's find out. No way! Oh. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, oh my gosh! This one was born with two heads! What in... We have never encountered this like before. two heads that are like really stuck together too. Yeah. Okay, so he is wrapped around... Are you just wrapped around your shed? Oh, his like umbilical cord is wrapped around his body. Dude, okay, I want to get this off first. Whoop, that just fell off. I meant to just break the shed, but the whole thing came off. Okay, he's got stuck shed on his head, too. That is very, very strange. Yes. Can he close his mouth, or does he have something stuck in there? Do we just have dirt in our mouth? I think we do. Oh, there comes some of it. That is so strange. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just two heads side by side. Yeah, but one bottom jaw. Yeah. That is so weird. Huh. Well, I'm gonna get this shed skin off his head. I can understand why he'd have a tough time shedding that off. Oh. Is, the, is the other eye functional? Because the one on this side looks... Oh yeah, they both look... They're both functional. Look functional. I think I got all the shed skin off his head. The thing is, he's like Oh yeah, he's got... Too, so. Yeah. But he might get used to it. He's got some weird sense of balance thing going on. Yeah, I don't know. This guy seems perfectly formed from like half an inch past the neck down, but it appears as though there's like a kink up here, which from what I understand seems to be pretty common in two-headed snakes to have a kink. So I mean, if that's wrong, there's other things that are wrong. And yeah, he seems to have two heads, but only one lower jaw. That is so He's got strange. One eye in the middle. One eye in the middle? Yeah. Oh, weird. It's like another head decided to grow. Aww. He's got a tongue. Yeah, he does. He's flicking his tongue. We're going to put this guy aside for now, and we're going to go through the entire enclosure, find all the rest, and then see how he's doing. So we found where she had her babies. It was underneath her water dish, which is the most humid spot in the enclosure. We didn't give her a humidity box because we wanted to have more of a natural setup to see what she did, and she found the humid spot. She did have a couple of these infertile eggs, which are called uh, beans, I believe, in like the garter snake community. So we're gonna remove all of this, even though some of it might be left behind for the isopods to eat. It does look like right here, she had one stillborn baby. So that is gonna happen from time to time, no matter which garter snakes you're breeding, what morph, what species, it's just gonna happen. But hopefully the rest are okay. Baby! Aww! There's a cute, healthy looking baby. All right, there's one. using this as an opportunity to clean out the entire enclosure. It is kept as a bioactive setup, so it might look a little dirtier than the pristine enclosures that you might be used to, but that's because we have a bunch of isopods and springtails here breaking everything down. So the old shed skin and some of the feces do provide food for them. Come on, come on. Oh, there's two under there. Oh, come here. Oh my gosh, you're so fast. I can't film and catch you at the same time. Oh, thanks. There we go. Here's a cute baby. Oh, and another one trying to make a break for it back here. You think you're sneaky. 
Come here. Oh, there's another one underneath the log too. Okay, two, and, and, come here. Oh no, ah, look, we got three babies right there. Oh my gosh, there's one. Oh, there's another one. This is a big one, wow. They were just all hiding under this rock. Come here, baby. Oh, I got him. Ah. Oh no, here's one. Oh, I missed that one. Oh my gosh, how many babies do we have? We have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, I think. And thirteen. And thirteen. How's this guy doing? Hi. He's you... upright now. Yeah, he is upright. Now, before we uh, continue with them, I'm going to take this opportunity and like wipe down all the ledges and clean everything up, and then put the adults back in. We left some feces in there because we have to leave some food for the isopods. Like this guy. Oh gosh, there's a baby in there. Hello. Um, found another one. All right, I guess uh, they will bury themselves a little uh, bit. Apparently, I didn't think they would dig that deep. I even looked through the entire top layer. Where were you hiding? My goodness. Don't worry about it. Don't scoop me up in your dirt. Sorry. Okay, here, you hold him. I'm gonna keep on rejuvenating their bedding and I guess trying to find more babies. stillborn and one with two heads for some reason but you did good mama good job okay let's put you back first and foremost let's check out that double-headed baby wow check that out that's crazy we were just talking about what we'd do if we got us a double-headed baby it unfortunately looks like his head splits like where the eyes are and i wish the split actually started back behind the head so that each head was uh, controlled independently i worry that where the split is here that he might not make it and it also appears as though he only has one lower jaw that's interesting so as as fascinating as this little guy is, and we've never experienced this before, I don't know if this guy is going to end up making it. We're going to set him up in his own baby bin in a second, but first let's check out the normal babies. Here are all the babies! If you look close, you'll see some of them have this really pretty orange stripe down their back, and some of them are a little bit duller or brighter than others, but overall, they have an incredible pattern. I love what the checker garter does with the pattern down their back. And they have that nice orange stripe too. And what I love about Prius is that she gives birth to nice, big, healthy babies. Like these are bigger than the pure blood checker garters that we used to breed in the past. So these are nice and healthy and should make really good pets once they're established and eating. Oh, this one's a... That's chunky. Oh, that is a chonky one. Here's another really pretty one. Wow, you're really pretty, and you're really pretty. Look at those stripes right behind the head. It's so bright. And I love the little dot on their head too. You're so cute, yes you are. So to kind of show you the difference between what we're looking at and saying is a bright one versus a dull one, if you look at the back stripe or the dorsal stripe there, it's considerably brighter on the lower garter snake in my hands than the upper one. So it's neat to see how they vary so much. A couple of years ago, in Prius's first clutch of hybrid babies, we held back one of the really pretty, brightly striped babies. So now we've got to show you how pretty she is. Here she is. Her name is C-Max. We thought she was a male at first, but turns out this is a female. So this is one of Prius's first daughters. And her stripe, although it's not as orange as it was, uh, like when she was a baby, it's still super bright in this nice pale yellow color. And there's a lot of contrast between the stripe and her black colored body. So it just really pops out. But here you go. Here's one of Prius's babies at two years old. She even has the dot. Yeah, she's got the dot on her head too. All of Prius's babies have that little dot and it's so cute. And now we know it stays into adulthood too. Yeah, their pattern doesn't change a whole lot. Other than getting a little duller. 
Yeah, true. It kind of stays about the same. Yeah, they still have that really pretty checkering pattern down their back. Mm -hmm. This little girl, C-Max, is doing really well for us. She loves to eat. She's a fantastic eater, but she's growing really well. And again, these, these little hybrids, oh man, they just are turning out to be really fun garter snakes to have. She's also a program animal. Yeah, we bring her to programs now too. She eats a fish or a worm in front of kids and she's handled by kids. So you can see she's like a lot calmer than those babies. Yeah, she's one of our program animals. Okay. Let's get them set up and baby this. First, we're going to add just paper towels. We like to use this as bedding for our baby snakes because it's easier to feed them. We can just put food right on the paper towels and they won't ingest any bedding that way. We lightly misted them down so that if some of them still have to shed for the first time, that should help increase humidity levels. And now, since the back part will be heated, we've got our most adorable little clay or ceramic hides for them. I won't put water in it yet, but those are all their water dishes. And now we get to fill them up with enrichment. Garter snakes love to explore and climb. So we're gonna put all sorts of fun toys in here for them. There we go. Oh, they look so cute. Since we have 13 normal babies, we are going to split them up into groups of four, four, and five. Garter snakes definitely do better in groups instead of being housed by themselves. We've found that babies are more likely to eat, they're not as skittish, and they just seem calmer and happier overall. There we are, got all the babies in. Oh man, it's tough to keep them all in place, but there's our clutch, uh, minus the two-headed one, which we'll get to in a second, but they are super explorative. Here, go check out your cave. Yeah, there's a cave just for you right there. We're going to offer them a variety of food. We're gonna try earthworms and raw chicken. We'll try fish and maybe some pinky parts. The ones that are eating regularly for us for a few weeks straight will be ready for their new homes. But for now, we're going to put them all in the baby rack because they're all trying to escape. Okay, this little dude is gonna go in his own baby bin. We'll probably, I mean, if he makes it and he eats, we'll probably give him a couple of friends later on, but for now, just so I can observe him and he won't be bothered by other snakes slithering uh, over top of him, I'm just going to keep him isolated. We're going to give him a very shallow water dish so it's easier for him to reach. And he gets some enrichment too. We'll give him this flower and we'll give him a little leaf to hide under, and I think that'll be good for him. Um, he's moving around. He is moving. He's actually upright quite a bit now. Yeah. I wonder if this kink right here is where both skulls, like, or skulls, I guess both heads join? I don't really know. It'd be really interesting to get maybe a radiograph of him and yeah. actually see the skeletal structure. I mean, once he settles down, he moves fine. Yeah. It's so weird. It's like his... Like, yeah, he's got a fully formed head, and then he's got a, like, a twin hanging on. Mm-hmm. I was originally thinking maybe it was, like, a deformed head that was split in half a little bit, but then if you look at his head, you can see two dots, and all of our babies have one dot on their head. And you can also see two definitive noses on the front. You are so fascinating. Whether or not, I mean, it would be sad if you didn't make it, but you are still a really interesting animal. I wonder why he seems to spin around. Do you think it's a neurological issue? What if it's he's got two brains that are trying to control that <gasps> body? I didn't think of that. Like when he gets scared, both brain, both you know, they're kind of pointed in separate ways. So maybe they're both trying to take off the other way, and it just ends up making him spin. Oh, that could totally be it. I I bet he does have. I think he has enough of each head to house a brain in each one. So maybe he'd learn to control it Aww, over time? he just did a tongue flick. Did he? Yes, he did. Aww. Hey, little dude. Oh, I just saw it. It's like an internal tongue flick. Aww. You are so precious. Yeah. But we can't get too attached. Nope. Just in case he doesn't make it. Exactly. As neat as this is, and I'm gonna leave the leaf here so he doesn't freak out by me removing it and him feeling exposed, but as neat as this is, it's not a double head situation where each head is its own individual head. His heads here are pretty attached, which is unfortunate. So, I mean, there's a chance he might make it, and if he can eat, that'd be great. He might, actually. I wonder if he only has one esophagus. Probably. Oh, we'll have to see when we try to feed him. There he is, he's poking his heads out. That's not something you say every day. No, 
So we're going to give them the best chance at survival we can. However, when you breed snakes, if you have a deformity like this and the snake does not have a good quality of life, then you unfortunately have to make that tough decision to cull the animal so that they don't suffer. So if it comes to that, we will do that. As tough as it would be, we understand the necessity of, as breeders, having to do that from time to time. But we hope that he survives. But I mean, so far he doesn't exactly look like he's suffering. No, he doesn't seem he's to be alert. in pain. He acting like all the other garter snakes just a little bit slower and when he when he gets really scared he like spins so maybe he'll be able to learn to control his balance yeah, maybe i don't know but again if he can't control his movements to the point where he seems constantly stressed or if there's a point where we realize he can't eat at all then we don't want him to just starve to death so we would make that decision if needed Okay, dude, we are going to set you... Oh, he's going to curl up under the leaf. Oh, you can still curl up. That's adorable. Uh, we're going to set him up in this little individual container up near where the other garters are kept, and we'll update you in a few hours. So overall, I'd say it was a very good clutch from Prius. She had 13 good babies, and I think this is her biggest clutch we've ever had from her biggest litter, right? Yeah, we'd have to go back and look at previous videos, but I think she's always done under 10. Under 10, yeah, she had eight, I think, one year. So yeah, 13 is quite yeah. a bit more. So that's a lot of babies for her. I mean, it is normal for one or two of the babies to be stillborn. That's just what happens with live bearing species. I do want to mention though that the waiting list for the babies is already full. Um, so these babies are all going to be claimed as soon as they're ready to go to their new homes. Thank you to all of our Patreon backers for your amazing support on this channel. And thank you to everybody for watching our videos. We will keep you posted on the double headed baby and how he does. Fingers are crossed that he's able to do all right. And we'll see you next time. Okay, buddy, let's check on you. This is the double-headed baby. Cheyenne just dropped her nut. Oh, look at that! He pooped! Whoa, that's a good sign. You under your leaf. Oh, there we are. I don't want to scare you. Here, I won't get the phone closer. I'll just zoom in. Yeah, we're still not completely upright. I mean, his head is upright, so that's good, but doesn't know how to control the entire body yet. All right, well, he pooped twice. Oh, look at that. Okay, well, good job, buddies. Or buddy, I don't know if I should refer to you as plural or not. What do you think? Are you coming to help? Do you see the baby in here? Do you see the baby? Thanks. Well, I am going to put the leaf back on him because he seems to be more, most comfortable underneath there. And we'll check on him tomorrow and see how he's doing. I don't know if this guy is going to eat or not. He pooped again, so that's a good sign. Hi, all of your siblings have already eaten. Whoa, sorry for the weird quality. The lighting's weird in this room and it's like midnight. Here, we discovered he only has one tongue, or they only have one tongue. It's on his right and our left right now. So I'm hoping he flicks it, because that's what's going to help him realize that this worm is food in front of him. Hopefully. Unfortunately, the lip touching technique, which usually initiates a feeding response from garters, doesn't seem to work with him. It seems to just kind of scare him. All right, he does not seem interested at all. So I'm going to leave that in there with him, put everything back. Oh, and another update. I uh, decided to take out the water dish, and that's because animals with neurological issues, I forgot about this earlier, but then remembered, um, animals with neurological issues often shouldn't be given a water dish because they may accidentally fall into it, can't physically get back out, and then they drown. So currently we're just misting the enclosure so that he can drink droplets off the side. I have to do that still before I go to bed here, um, but that's why he doesn't have a water dish. likely be my last update in this video um, just because it's probably getting long enough as it is but I'm going to see if having a buddy will make the two-headed baby want to eat so since that buddy is pretty wild I just moved him into a different container for now and I'll feed him afterwards here but let's see if this little dude is willing to eat for us do you want a piece of worm flick your tongue I know you've only got one but flick it flick it smell the food no. Now it's scary, huh? Yep, he still doesn't want to eat. 
Okay, well, like I said before, I'm not going to get too attached to this little guy because, I mean, he has some obvious issues, so we'll have to see. I mean, hopefully he starts eating. If he eats a meal, any meal at all, that would be a really good sign, and I'd have much more confidence that he'd end up making it. But as it stands now, though, don't get too attached, guys. I mean, it's a really, really cool thing that happened. A really fascinating thing is a better word for it. Not necessarily cool, because I don't know if this guy's going to make it or not, but I'll keep you posted on the community tab on the, on the YouTube channel if not in just a future video too. So if he makes it, there will definitely be more videos with him. If he does not, I will update you in a post on the community tab. Fingers are crossed for this little guy and we'll see you next time. Just kidding, this will be the last update. He is almost three weeks old now and he's still hanging in there and he can drink, but I can't get him to eat anything. He has one esophagus we discovered and if I assist feed him, he doesn't take the food. If I force feed him and actually get food down his throat a ways, he just herps it back up. So I wanted to do one more update because I mean the video is coming out tomorrow and I didn't want everyone to get attached to this little guy because I really don't think he's going to make it, which is really a bummer because he's an interesting little creature here. Um, we're not gonna call yet though because since he's acting like a normal garter and he drinks, that was a big sign for us, we're not gonna call yet because I wanna give him at least a little bit longer to see if we can initiate a feeding response. But again, if we have to do it, we will decide to call if need be. Unfortunately, with breeding snakes, you get weird things that happen occasionally. So thank you everybody for watching though. Keep your fingers crossed for him, although don't get your hopes up too high, but we'll see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.